Radio Shouty. For the record, I'm letting them know my hands ashy. So if you in the comments <laughs> trying to fuck with me and be high talking about my hands ashy, you need to motherfucking check your eyeballs, bitch. Because I told you it was ashy. Now that we got that shit out of the way, let's get it. Let's get it. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Of course, you know it's your folk, Beehive Radio. Shout it, man. And hey, I got an N.O. legend, hip hop legend, Dirty South legend in this thing. My dog, hey. Fiend, what's good with it, boss? Boop, boop, boop. Come on. What it do, what it do, man. ATL and the surrounding areas. Most importantly, my main man, 2050, 100 grand. Beehive. Hey, Fiend, I mean, I have to just say that uh, I'm happy to have you this morning, afternoon, or this evening. Ooh, Ooh. Great, great morning, <laughs> afternoon, or this evening. Yeah, yeah. baby boy. Yeah, because it's the world. Believe it. Yeah. Believe it. Yeah. When I heard that damn song right there, you might as well dedicate all them streams to me. Okay? I got, I got because that. I had that thing on repeat. Talk to me about putting that banger together. What was your mind at at that time? And then with that track, man, because, I mean, it was just a whole different flow from Fiend that really just kind of touched the hearts of men in the middle of a pandemic in this thing. Hey, bro. And women. Hey, bro. I'm, uh, I'm just facilitating the vibes of what's missing yeah. from me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to emulate nobody else. I'm just going to facilitate the vibes that's needed from me. And I think, like, right now, the people just need that energy. People need that soul, and uh, people need reassurance that it's going to be okay, dang. I mean, but when you say that, you know, folks were thinking that a demise was for sure, but it didn't happen. I mean, oh, talk no. to me about that feeling right there, because, yeah. I mean, that is really one of those emotions that a lot of folks experience, but they feel to themselves, you know what, I'm about to lose. It's right. about to go down. It right. ain't getting no better. Right. But then you look up and you survive that, and nothing happens, and you spent all that Energy, right. scared of something that wasn't happening. Yeah, man. Well, the world been, you know, is 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 a scary place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the world is a scary place, and the most important thing you can do is live. Mm -hmm. Get up and fight again. You know, be a survivor. You know. Yes, sir. So I feel like, man, um, if you can express that stuff, that feel like you damn the the most intimate stuff mm -hmm. that you almost wouldn't go Share. past. Yeah, it wouldn't yeah. Even go past us just chopping it up. Believe it or not, you don't know where you might save somebody, where you might inspire somebody, or where you might let somebody know that it's okay. Yeah. You're going through what you're going through. Facts. Because everybody don't get therapy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying everybody got to go sit in front of a, a psychiatrist, but everybody that been through some type of something. Exactly. And most people don't know that they traumatized from things. So that music helps vent, the music soothes the soul. And when I can pitch it in, I'm gonna pitch it in to see, you know, to check in and let people know I'm here for them, you hear me? Exactly, now that uh, survival anthem. That was the return of Mr. Womp Womp right there, Fiend. Hey, bro, hey, bro. Talk hey, to me. Hey, bro, this survivor's anthem is a piece of this new Fiend, a, fiend, a real Fiend album. Ooh. Like a real fiend album, you heard me? Name of the album is TGIF, Thank God is Fiend. Mm -hmm. What I mean by it is like, Thank God is Fiend, is like, Thank God is family. Thank God is, um, I have faith. Thank God I found myself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people are, are, are not love themselves and I forget who they are and they'll put themselves on a level and not a pedestal where they should be. That's right. As far as loving themselves and, and pushing themselves. Mm -hmm. So this is what this project is is me checking in, saying, uh, here's the basic instructions before leaving Earth. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how much time I got. I don't know how much time you got. I ain't even trying to be an extra philosophical. I just want to let you know, here's a message in a, a, a MP3 in a bottle. <laughs> exactly. And I hope this message finds you, you dig? Talk to me about your creative process during this whole pandemic, though, man. I mean, how was you able to still jam with all of this craziness going on around you? You got you to gotta have some fight in you. Facts. You got to have some fight in you, bro. You, you know, like... Sh you got to have some fight in you. And my man Tupac used to say, like, you males will do it while you're young. Because when you get older, like testosterone and stuff, you know, you may not be so eager um, to want to go indulge in a lot of things that could risk your life or, or just, you know, to build fear on you to make you scared of doing things because you got so many other things at stake. Yeah. So my thing is, I'm telling anybody that's listening right now, you dig? I'm gonna need you, this project, where I come from right now, in my mind, where my head is at 2021. You need to wake up that eight year old inside of you that dreamed. Mm. You need to let that eight year old little boy, or little girl know they ain't gotta be scared no more. Come on. I need you to show up with that same charisma, 
and the admiration to be something special yep. right now. I want yep. you to let them know you can hold their hand, the eight-year-old you, yep. the six-year-old you. I want you to grab the hand of that person inside of you mm-hmm. and let them know you ain't got to be scared. I want you to be who you want to be now. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and blossom like you should be, bro. That's where I'm at. Um, and I feel like it's going to not only help somebody, it's going to put some fire on somebody's ass to make them go to be something, you heard? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Talk to me about realizing that you needed to use your platform as a motivational tool, though, man. Because like I said, that Believe It was motivational for me oh, when I rolled to that thing, man. And right. I'm noticing that a lot of your music is going in that direction. So, I mean, speak to me about the growth. Hey, man, um... <laughs> You ever saw the movie uh, Liar Liar? Yeah. And how he just had to say the truth once his kid <laughs> like, wished it? I feel like that's what's going on with me as far as the energy and electricity as far as sharing them type of vibes. Yeah. No matter what I, no matter what the atmosphere may cause, mm-hmm. this is what's going to come out. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? I'm with you. I ain't no preacher. I'm a reacher. You feel me? Yeah. So I think that's what's going on with me. Cause I keep hearing it, and I feel like I can't even unlock what I can't unlock. I can't unlock this to say something unless the the the, the codes are right, are tapped in right, unless it's the right uh, code to open it up. You know, yeah. it's the right like um like a safe or something. Uh-huh. And once I do it, bro, it, it, it's something enormous like that survivor's anthem. You feel me? Thanks. You could feel it and can't run from it. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So yeah, bro, um, that's me. Not running from the eight year old side of me yeah. that wasn't scared, running in the street, you know, falling down, possibly breaking. <laughs> Busting your head. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So that's, yeah, I feel like I unlock something and I like to tap into that because it reminds me don't bullshit myself. Come on now. Don't bullshit myself over of false feelings and shit I think, I think compared to what I feel. You know exactly. What I'm yeah. I mean, you have that survivor's anthem. Now that brought back Mr. Want Want, but uh, Mr. Uh, International Jones on Ain't Gotta Ask. Yeah. That player showed up again, man. Hey, man. That player showed up again, hey, babe. Man. Hey, bro. I'm just trying to be here and give you the soundtrack to get money, getting some more stamps of your passport. Yes, sir. Traveling with some beautiful women and experiencing life. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm I'm for. You yeah. I mean? I'm, the, I'm the player's guide as International Jones for you to get more and, and get more and enjoy more. Exactly. Fiend is just a hero and a monster, you know. Shit can get real, and I want you to fight. I mean, yep. fight for something. War exactly. for reasons, you know what I mean? Facts. Yeah. Now, I also saw you giving back to the community over the holidays and stuff like that, mm-hmm. man. Why was it important for you to show that love and keep it real in the streets? Um, My cousin Journey, um, Kareem, mm-hmm. 0017, shout out to Pref. Yeah. Um, A lot of brothers from the 17th. Um, Nesby Phipps, uh, rest in peace, and my cousin Christopher Fourier. We just got together. Uh, shout out to T. Curtis, my other cousin that helps me with this. Man, we started uh, four years ago. Mm-hmm. We got 60 toys, right? The first time. Yeah, got yeah. some holiday music in the park for the kids. <laughs> I grew up with holiday music, whether you believe in Christmas or not, but mm-hmm. what it feels like. That type of love and family unity, it feels unbelievable. Yeah. You know, we could bottle that shit up and sell it Thanks. every day. People will want it 365, 140, right? Exactly. So I, I decided to make an effort to give it to kids that's less fortunate. Yeah. They might be less fortunate this year, but they may be fortunate next year, right? Thanks. So what we do is we get in the park, we start in the park, we got like 60 toys, man. Me and my cousin, we pulled out a little bread together here, man. We bought some toys. The DJ, we cooked on a little grill I had. You heard my cousin grill. And we fed the kids that was that. Next year, we ended up having 2,000 toys. Ooh. People donated. Shout out to Wild Wayne. And just people in the city, man, that are like hitting angels that support or find these endorsements to support situations like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So uh, this was the fourth year I just passed by uh, my brother Priff, um, Kareem. Uh, shout out to Lil Wayne, Mac Main. Yeah. They donated big to make sure these people had a great Christmas in our neighborhood, Holly Grove. Yeah. And I feel like start with your neighborhood and the rest of the world gonna come. I'm gonna start with my village. Come on. And let it, you know, let it be realistic within them because these are the people that put blood, sweat, and tears with me. And these are the people that raised me. You know what I'm saying? So the least I can do is find a way to make one day more special in their life so they can work on the next one, you dig? Exactly. No limit chronicles, man. 
Wow. That thing hit so damn hard and <laughs> drove everybody wild. I mean, break that down to me. Uh, the No Limit Chronicles was good for um, revitalizing the brand and people that's affiliated with the brand um, to step in if, if they want to do business uh, and also just checking in with the people yeah, to remind them that you're not forgotten. Come on. You did experience this. Yeah. You did see us make $400 million in, in three years. You My witnessed that. God. And we're still here. Rest in peace, Big Ed. Rest in peace, Magic. Yeah. Chastity. Rest in peace. Um, Soldier. Soldier Slim. Man. Uh, Magnolia. Young James Tap. Yeah, uh, we miss you, Corey Miller. We miss you, McKinley Phipps. Freedom yeah. Boys, um, they are uh, wrongfully accused for things they did not do. Yeah, um, no disrespect to the families that mourn over the children that were lost yeah. behind these incidents. Yeah, but to be clear, but to be clear, they are wrongfully accused. Yeah, um, so many people we lost. Shout out to. Um, Brian, he used to drive the blue Acura Legend. He used to come around back in the day at the studio. I remember him. Yeah. Uh, just rest in peace, my brother, Kevin Bailey. Rest in peace, Kevin Miller. You know, we just, we come a long way. Rest in peace, Mia's mom and dad. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, rest in peace to Mia, Mia X's mom and dad. We just lost so many great um, soldiers. So many great ancestors. Rest in peace to my dad. Wow. Yeah. Wow, bro. Um, so many people that walked with us, supported us, cheered us on. Yeah. And we feel like we'd be damned if we're going to drop the ball now. What was it like going down memory lane in front of the whole world? Your phone blowing up, obviously. Your Instagram blowing up, obviously. Don't forget the prices went up. Constantly too, you know? <laughs> and we're gonna talk about some up shit. You know? Come on, come on. The price yeah. is going through the damn roof yeah. at the Brrr, same time. Stick it, stick it, stick it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Sure. What was that experience like, too, man? It was cool, man. I did a gang of marketing, uh, advertising. I ran commercials all over yeah. TV, all over radio. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I did that to let people know to reinforce the brand of Sleepy Bear, my clothing brand. Exactly. Uh, that I have music out. You know what I'm saying? It was dope, y'all. Um, it was dope, man. And, this, and to see the footage, uh, my mom was like, yo, um, I saw when you was talking to Wild Wayne, and you, he was like, so yeah, you know, what do you want out of this? You know, you got no limit. What do you want out of this? And I'm, I'm like 19, probably, maybe 20. And I tell Wayne I want family and money out of it and sitting on the sofa with my kids and my wife and uh, my mother-in-law um at the time i was just saying to myself like wow you know what i'm saying like um maybe i had my head on my shoulders the correct way i honestly believe that god and the universe and ancestors just preserved me yeah you know what i'm saying and i believe a woman prayers is like kryptonite come on it'll save you <laughs> yeah. so i can't not take no credit other than putting one foot after the other and having some awesome people that love me you know um musa my jet life family uh fendi p aka corner boy p just people that never gave up on you bro yeah, yeah buster you know, Craig Carter, Flex, so many people, bro, that just didn't give up. Mm -hmm. So to get this No Limit Chronicles on TV, it was good to see that um, I ain't make a complete fucking idiot out of myself. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and a lot, you know, and um, it was cool, man. It's kicks to see some perspectives of that era. Yeah. And it was also a little disappointing watching the end of it because we genuinely I but as a matter of fact I'm gonna speak for me but I know as being one of the baby boys of this label yeah. I pretty much could speak for everybody like almost like a union. Yeah. <laughs> we really, really genuinely fucks with Percy Miller. Yeah. Master P. You know, we really do things shit got weird yeah <laughs> and no one could point the finger at no one mm -hmm. but everyone knew they had to keep 
put one foot after the other. Yeah. So I'm going to leave it like that. You know what I'm saying? But I was excited to see people being somewhere that been rooting for you all your life. Yeah, exactly. Be like, I told you that I'm my dog right now. <laughs> I told you, I told you, bitch, that bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, yeah, man. And um, so it was. What dope. were the kids saying though? Because see, they were not around for all of that stuff, nah. man. So for them to understand that daddy was out here getting busy. Hey, you know what, bro? Uh, shout out to my mom, my mother-in-law, and people that played my music, especially inspirational stuff for my kids. Yeah. Shout out to my um, my oldest daughter's mother, and her stepfather. For constantly having Fiend ringing in the house. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Constantly having International Jones when they could play Come in on. the house. So she always be attached to that to know better. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It felt good to see my babies see the commercial. Like, they're, they're watching the docu series yeah. already, right? And like, okay, Dad, look, okay, Dad, right? And then a commercial, my, I got a cold commercial <laughs> running. You know what I'm saying? I let you see I'm presently doing. So they like, yeah. yeah, so my son is just convinced. Like, this is this what he's doing. <laughs> he is convinced, bro. But I'm like, this is this is, uh, this is too early to think. My yeah. brother, my, my youngest daughter, Riley, my sweet baby Riley, she is this dancer, uh, this eclectic dancer, this creative, this unbelievably beautiful child um just like my oldest um that is just tripped out like they I, i'm here bro yeah i'm here i could have been dead a hundred times mm. i could have been in jail a hundred times a hundred times yeah you know what i'm saying and i'm still here and i'm so grateful to be able to live and witness this and to experience this and still be here. Uh, some of my YGs out there, what I mean, I'm gonna say like young go-getters. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Not young gangsters, just young go-getters. Hey man, um, I'm gonna drop this and hope you could pick it up, you dig? Yeah. Um, Ain't nothing wrong with having an exit plan. Hey. Ain't nothing wrong with knowing what it's like to get older. You know what I'm saying? Come on. I'm not knocking it if you want to crash and burn, but I, I just want to put it out there. I was your age once, and once I found somebody to live for other than just myself, to, yeah. be, to, live, to be selfless, I turned up even more so. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So that was the thing Tupac didn't get a chance to see. Mm. Children. Yeah. A wife. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That would have slowed him down. It, it would have made him have the opportunity yeah. to know he had a choice. Come on. I'm not knocking nothing saying that man made any wrong decisions. Yeah. I'm not saying that my words could have changed his life. Yeah. I'm speaking from a perspective of my own. Exactly. Being a, a person that looked up and look up to this man and what all what came with that. Yeah. So, yeah, man, so I just wanted to put that out there. Cause I, I mean, kids and a wife makes you think twice, okay? <laughs> That's hey man, just the best time. way to put that. Yeah, I mean that. Now, coming off of that No Limit Chronicles, mm-hmm. you know, me and my podcast partner, Gangsta Wick, we've been having a debate mm-hmm. thing. When are we going to get a cash money versus No Limit versus, sir? Man, like, look, like, check this out, you dig? Talk like, to me. me. Like, I ain't going to overspeak or underspeak on nothing, you dig? But Ooh. that would be gravy with the, with the, with the mashed potatoes, you heard me? <laughs> it would be gravy. But I'm going to tell you this. I make no promises. I don't overcommit to underdeliver. Yeah. So I will tell you, though, I have voiced my opinion. Ooh. Uh, I, oh, I have been in the, uh, what they call that? <laughs> the people, oh, I, I have been lobbying <laughs> for uh, for a Cash Money No Limit tour. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. I, I think that's a whole nother wall just to say. I'm not saying it got to happen tomorrow. That needs to happen. I'm, I'm saying that's the type of energy I'm lobbying for because I could have been like, well, look, this is my bag, mm-hmm. and I'm going to go ahead and keep this idea. I'm putting this energy out in the atmosphere <laughs> because we saw Gucci Man, Young Jeezy, Jeezy versus Gucci Man yep. in Atlanta, historical, Come on. and no problems the whole entire night yep. in the 770-678. Come on. Fold, fold. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Come so, on. So I want to be able just for for what it's worth yeah. to be able to move forward and have that to start a new type of 
legacy and history about us. Mm-hmm. You know, if, for, if, if you know if it means something to um, the people all involved. Either. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, nah, we need that. I mean, the culture needs that. The industry needs that. The world needs that right Amen. there. And that's just what that is. Amen. Now, Fiend, when you look at your career, mm-hmm. you had an opportunity to work with three legendary labels, man. Yeah. No Limit, right. Rough Riders, right. and Hypnotized Minds. Right. Where do you feel like you really got your shit off at? Uh, hey, man, to keep it a straight buck. I I'm, I'm I have I'm a part of all those labels, including Jet Life, yeah. including my own label, yeah. Fiend Entertainment, FDE, Thanks. and I am all of these labels. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm 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 Mafia. I'm a No Limit Soldier. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm Boot Camp Click. Yeah. I'm Jet Life. Come Iron on, gang. You heard me? And I'm um. Was that everybody? And I'm Rough Rider. <laughs> Don't forget that. And let me be clear why I'm saying this. You don't get awards for being a guy that's the bridge. Yeah. Every label I've been honored to be a part of, yeah. it's because I'm a bridge. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Nothing's bigger than the bridge. Yeah. The bridge just want to help people get yeah. across. Exactly. To and from. Exactly. And that was my part. And I was, to this day, very, very prideful being a part of all those great labels. Then, now, and tomorrow. Facts. So I'm a part of all those labels still today. Mm. Yeah. Now, are we still getting this book, Fane? Yeah, you're getting this book. That's crazy. You should mention that um, I was trying to sell that motherfucker yesterday. <laughs> you heard me? For real, man. I was like about to sling that bitch. You heard me? Like, you know, then I thought about it. I was talking to Pimp and Kent. Yeah. Shout out to Pimp and Kent and Charlie Braxton. And he was like, um, nah, man, nah, Fane. Um, keep that thing, man. Um, independent, man. Keep yeah. it. I was just gonna do it, and I had a few things. That's just me. I, I ain't attached to number me and my people. You dig? Yes, sir. So I was like, man, I'm like sling this motherfucker, you know man. Just yeah. take the bread or take the opportunity mm-hmm. and do ten, twenty thousand more things. You know hear I me? Mean? But then the reality of it was, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bake this cake slow. So, but I will tell you this here: you gonna have this book no no later than May. Um, no later than May. But it's it's gonna be ser- it's serious. Talk bro. to me, Fiend. What you gonna be touching on in that thing, man? Hey, bro. Let me just say this. Um, everything you can get from me musically, you know, waiting on God. You know, um, tennis shoes, and tuxedos. You know, no limit soldiers. Um, uh, get the ah, uh, my. You gonna get all my ups <laughs> and my downs. You hear me? Everything, bro. What what made me do what? What you missed? Everything, all the drama. I I was I re- voice I voice recorded the book first. Ooh, so it wasn't it was in sequential order as far as laying out chapters and having the questions asked by Charlie Braxton. Yeah, but um, I got to figure out a way to convert the audio because it was too emotional for me. Like it was too emotional for me to to hear to wake up and remind myself of things that I had not thought about. In a very long time, you know what I'm saying? What was the part in there that just woke you out, Fiend? Um, the part in the book that just uh, woke me out as far as just mentally had me warped was my brother, my father, and uh, being uh, one of the biggest things since sliced bread, but being broke is a joke. You know, a lot of those things warped on me. You know, I, di- I didn't used to visit my mom at certain heights in my career because I ain't had no money to give her. Damn. Not that she, that's our relationship. Yeah. But for somehow, I felt like I owe this person something and how, it's like you owe somebody something and you go around them yeah. and you ain't got their bread and you know you, you know it's love <laughs> yeah. to be there yeah. and you acting like you comfortable without saying, here you go, baby, you heard me? I yeah. Like, you know, I, 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 I just, it just didn't sit right with my spirit. Yeah. And I used to just be out hustling, bro, no matter what I was doing, looking to get something. Man, I, every time I see my mom, my auntie, I stroke them a check, stroke them a check, stroke them a check, stroke them a check. And, I mean, they can appreciate it, but they ain't what they wanted Yeah, for me to show up and visit. You yeah. know what I mean? That had to, it, it beat me up something terrible, you know, closing my dad's eyes mm. uh, November 18th, um, closing my dad's eyes um, and, um, you know, 
watching my dad go before my eyes. Like, it did a bit, you know what I mean? Yeah, I've been to more funerals and graduations. I got it. Yeah, I'm not bragging. I'm just recollecting the book. Yeah. And to know that I still came out victorious. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Without a stain on me. Exactly. I knew that somebody loved me for real. You did. At them times where you found yourself at the height of your career but then still broke, what was the moves that you had to make to financially secure yourself during those times? Because, you know, you can get so broke sometimes that you like, God damn, I'm broke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the gas ran out of the car. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, you heard me? Oh, um, man, for real, bro. Like, I know, don't get me wrong. I know people be like, man, like, I'm, man, I always hear these stories, bro. Talks. I'm just keeping it funky with you. I tell you because I want you to know it's okay. I don't want you to go out and do something stupid because you think you got so much fucking pride <laughs> that your ass got to go do this stupid ass shit and now your ass locked up or even worse and everybody like, man, I can't believe this motherfucking dude just didn't wait or why yeah. you ain't ask me? I had too many people that love me that come to me and be like, bro, why didn't you just ask me? And I'm like, man, I couldn't see me fixing my face, man. Yeah. To ask you for X, Y, and Z. So I was out doing dumb shit. I was pumping. You yep. know, I was doing this and doing that. I was never passionate about pumping because I saw real players that did it before me. Yeah. And, you know, I had, you know, I could have done whatever. I just wasn't passionate about it. You feel mm -hmm. me? I was passionate about football. I was passionate about animals. I wanted to be a vet before I became <laughs> a, a, a music artist, industry, yeah. whatever, rapper, vocalist, you hear me? I just had to tap into me, man. I had to love me, fall in love with me to know that, look, you got to learn to cut shit off, cut people off, because you're rebuilding yourself and you don't know this. I've been around too many people. I was in Atlanta, bro. I was in Atlanta after Katrina, mm. and this lady, um, we was in uh, off a of far road. Yeah, Holiday Inn. Ooh. Right. This how it was hot. Right. Yeah. So we sitting in there, and this lady told my brother. So this is a man I call my brother. He will always be my brother. And she was. Uh, we were dating her daughters. Then, you know, I guess you could say that respectfully, you know, yeah. uh, you know, you know, a movie here. Yeah. You think? <laughs> so she was talking to us. You heard me? She was talking to us while the girls were getting themselves together. And um, she she walked in the room and she introduced herself and she was like uh, talking to my brother. She said, baby, um, this your friend? He's like, yeah, it's my friend. She's like, um. You don't know what that man been through. Mm. You don't know what he hiding from you or what he's dealing with. Oh, my God, you don't know what he fighting. Mm. And he looked at me, bro, and I sat there in Atlanta. Yeah. You hear me? Yeah. I ain't met this lady at home. She was from New Orleans. Yeah. I ain't get to meet her to that evening. You hear me? And she just was expressing that. And, you know, it, it kind of got me, you know, just, you know, the thought of somebody no reading without you having to tell them what you're going through because they say like people say I ain't no mind reader, bro. Exactly. You know what I'm saying like you got to talk to me. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? But for to have somebody acknowledge, I guess whatever I was going through as a young man facing uh, jail time, facing rebuilding, facing um, turning over my home and my office to 31 people that was evacuating Katrina. I just had stuff on me. Don't get me wrong, family. We all get through it. Yeah. My great my great grandfather, Boy Bell, used to tell me, without the bad days, how you gonna identify the good, the good ones, ones? Come on yeah. now. Yeah, so that was just something that helped me. Uh man, I, I, I bust out in tears, you heard me? Yeah. And I'm a firm believer, cleansing myself so I don't overflow and hurt nobody or myself. Come on now. So I, I just was tripping, man. I got it off me and I get a little hug and I said, um, you may not know specifically, but I appreciate you mm -hmm. for um, almost being able to tell somebody, like I said, a brother, that every day I'm not all right. That's right. And, I, and <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, like, you may not know why I, I'm just in the studio. Like, my whole career, I stayed in the studio because that was the safest place to be. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The safest place to be. I seen rappers go from being the favorite person in the neighborhood to now fuck these rap ass niggas. Oh. 
You know what I'm saying? I've I've, I've seen that. It's yeah. like genocide within the hip hop community. Come on now. So I've seen that transition, and I I know what it's like to be hunted. So I had to change things within my life. Like I said, I ain't no preacher. Yeah, you heard me. I ain't, I ain't you know I ain't celibate or nothing. You heard me. <laughs> I'm just keeping it funky. You heard me. In my career, that's what I got off of being a man in America. A man of color within this melon surviving in America, you heard me like when that's you, where my book gonna come from. Yeah, yeah. When you speak of hip hop genocide, man, I mean this last year we lost a lot of rappers just to, you know, the violence in the streets and just, you know, street culture. When you look back on Soldier Slim, one of the, you know, early hip hop artists to pass mm -hmm. in these streets, what was going through your mind at that time and how did that impact you? Um Soldier Slim's passing upset me solely on his mother discovering him mm. like that, his family discovering his mother, because my mother lost her son. Yeah. Not the gun violence, yeah. but she lost a son. Yeah. So my heart instantly went out to his um his mother and his sister. Yeah. And his family. And uh and his son. Yeah. You know, it really went out to little Soldier Slim, thinking that this little boy, so young, he he's not gonna have an adult relationship with his father. Yeah, and I hope I don't sound like I'm um um prying in their family life or their business. I'm just letting you know how his passing affected me. Yeah, I felt bad, Jeremy. Um. I felt bad. Um, my mom used to tell me, my dad used to tell me, no parent should have to bury their child. Yeah. And um, that's what that did. You know, Rest in Paradise Slim, I recorded with him um, and was about to go on a little small mini tour with him, me and him. What? You know, on some small spots. Yeah, right yeah. Up in Mississippi. You know what I'm saying? We was going to do but it. But we dude. don't know what that was going to turn into. Like a man, you know, then come to find out on the tragic news um so shout out to miss linda tap um shout out um gi um jane um her daughter she a dope mc too and shout out to soldier slim son little soldier slim yeah yeah you heard me um keep fighting the good fight man and keep being a great business man you dig when you think about slim what was his impact on new orleans and what did he mean to the community though what Slim means Ooh. to the community Come on now. is everything. Um, I think the people remember his courage and his um, motto just not to be fucked with. Yeah. You can apply that to basketball, football, tennis, arm wrestling, whatever your thing Come is. Come on. You know I, mean? like, I think that with us, he just was a, you know, not to be fucked with. And I think we got to always look at some type of positive out of everything. You know what I'm saying? You know, he meant what he said and he put action behind that shit. Exactly. And our city tough like that, you know what I mean? Every city is tough like that. And I think that's what they identified about themselves into Soldier Slim. When you think about your city, man, New Orleans, what do you feel like your impact was on the city and then just the movements that you was a part of coming out of the city? And then, you know, I got to throw beats by the pound in the conversation <laughs> as always. You understand for sure, me? For sure. Their impact as well. Yeah, um, my impact into the city, I honestly, I don't have a real grasp on it. Mm. It could be because I'm still breathing. Yeah. Um, and grateful to still be <laughs> exactly. you know I me. Mean? But other than the people that, that come to me and tell me I changed their life here and there, or um, you know, they fucking me the long way, I got them through some things. I got a lot of soldiers that tell me in the military that you got me through my deployment. Come on stuff now. Stuff like that. A lot of guys tell me I got them through their jokes. Yeah. A lot of girls tell me I got them through bad relationships. You know what I'm saying? Um, I just want to remind people to, Love yourself. I don't know if I'm if I'm actually. I think maybe egotistically, or vanity, or, or vain wise, mm -hmm. maybe at one time I did wanted to know how I affect. You know, or really, you know, or do the people fuck with you? Yeah. But I just think like um, this personal plight that I'm on has just got me to a point. I I don't wait 
for it. Mm-hmm. But I'm just grateful to keep checking in and put music out, putting vibes out to let people know it's okay. Exactly. Yeah. As a person that has had extreme highs and lows, man, how do you navigate the world doing your highs to keep from, you know, your ego taking you over the damn edge? And then how do you navigate the world doing your lows to keep your depression from taking you under? Wow. Um, very good question. But let me just t- add on to the Beast by the Pound. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to go back. Beast by the Pound is beyond impressionable, and they're going to be impressionable. I just wish that more the people can get more from Beast by the Pound. Mm-hmm. I wish there was a way that fans, people that just love the, the production style, their unique work that they, I wish they can get more of Beats by the Pound. Yeah. So it can exist more, not only to be a blueprint, but to just be um, just as impressionable in 2021 and further uh, for people of that art. Mm-hmm. And as far as um, surviving out here mentally, man, if you, if you know you're on some bullshit, stay home. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that's the <laughs> the best thing to do. Like, I don't bring my bullshit to nobody's step, and I got to accept the responsibility that will come with that if I do. Exactly. So that's my best thing. If you're not 100% yourself today, and you just think you on some bullshit and your energy, you could tell you changing the room of, you know, bringing negative. Sometimes you just got to get the fuck. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got to get the fuck and just go get that off you to go back, that's how I do. Yeah. If I don't feel like I'm in my right state, I don't want you to see something on me thinking this has something to do with you. Yeah. This is just me. Yeah. So I prefer to be at home in my in a mirror mm-hmm. to deal and talk to myself about this to get through it the best way I can so I can go socialize and coexist with my people, like I said. Exactly. Yeah. What about the highs? When you see the money coming in, fiend, what was going through your mind when you saw them checks? And what was the check that you saw that you said, damn, I get this for rapping? Uh, I don't know, man. Money money used to motivate the fuck out of me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, money used to motivate the fuck out of me. Uh, until they started calling me fiend for the money. Uh, you heard me? But uh, the biggest check, I don't know. I don't know. Um, they came in increments. Yeah. Um, they came in increments. You know, one time my mother was getting eighty thousand dollars a month for like three years. Ooh. Yeah, you know, some shit. My you know. God. You know. But guess what? If you don't know what to do with it, it's just a whole bunch of shoe money. Yeah. And a whole bunch of traveling money. <laughs> a whole lot of tricking money. Yeah. And a whole lot of girl, you want some cheese on that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You get extra cheese on that, yeah. So yeah, so Learning the science of finance is where I'm at right now. Exactly. I know the art of finance, and I'm hoping to teach my people, like this million-dollar mission, to let people know what to do with money because it's going to come rainy days. And you know I know because we got Hurricane Central, you hear me? Yeah. So yeah. Um, I, I tell people that's just where I'm at. Money, money don't move me as much as it used to. Mm-hmm. I like to look at my account and see streaming money, just, you know, streaming incomes. Yeah. And that's cool. But um, I think I'm more excited on creating and planting a seed on new business that could generate new streams of income mm-hmm. and I could uh, help give jobs to people or, or be able to own companies with people mm-hmm. and you know we're able to hire people, take care of people. I think that is, is, um, is more valuable and more pressionable to me now more than a check. I don't recall which check was a, a big check. Yeah. You know? I've never seen a one time million dollar check. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Z, you know, comma, <laughs> zero, 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 <laughs> comma, zero, 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 you know what I'm saying? Dot. Zero, zero. Zero, yeah. zero. You know what I'm saying? I had to get to that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If it was that cool, you know. If it wasn't that hell, cool. I mean, most folks ain't seen 80000 a month for three years straight either, though, fiend. <laughs> You know, <laughs> it's, it's according to your job. Come you, on. You know, like, it don't make or break you. Yeah. You t- I've, I've been homeless for a little bit. Ooh. On my ass, gas run out the car. Got, I don't mean like I, I was <laughs> stubborn. They ain't want to pull over gas. No, motherfucker. I, I had nothing Damn. to put in the gas tank. And I recall taking the chains to Albertsons and whoever lets you down the chain. Yeah. The chain, that should turn over to the piece of paper you're going to yeah. get gas for. Yeah. It. I was doing that. Woo, I'd so, have been there too. I would have been there. 
So yeah, I think it's just humbling, man. Like nobody at the end of the day, I'm gonna say some shit. It might be too real for most people. We here but for I, it. I hope that you get this and just you know either put it in the back pocket for later if you want. Yeah. Nobody care how much money you got but you. Ooh. I'm with you on that. You know what I'm saying? I'm with you on so, that. So nobody care about the money until you make it about the money. Ooh. So how can you feel bad when they got their hands out saying more? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. you know, big ticket right there. I hope, you know, you, you could do something with that. You know, I can. Yeah. Lastly, Fiend, is there anything you want to get off your chest? What do we need to be looking out for? And how can these folks contact you, man? Hey, man, what you need to be looking out for is e fucking each other. Ooh. You know, um, uh, uh, hello. Come uh, on. You know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that is my end all message. And if you want to look for me and, you know, look for me on 504 Fiend. That's 504 from New Orleans. We say, oh, 504 Fiend, F-I-E-N-D. I'm on uh, Clubhouse, too. You heard me? Yes, sir. Uh, Fiend for the Money International Jones. Get with your people. Or Fiend. Twitter, uh, I'm Fiend for the Money, F-I-E-N-D, the number four, D-A, money. 2021, late January. You heard me? Whenever you get this, is the project is out. It's called Fiend, T. G I F. Thank God it's fiend. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and keep in mind, it's just like saying, Thank God I found myself. Thank God for you. Thank God for family. Thank thank God for having my head on my shoulders to, you know, to remind myself, you know, think about your grandma tumors, bro. She don't leave it by herself, man. You know, it's time to fess up and come clean. You hear me? And let's leave some wealth behind instead of some debt. You hear me? Man, fame. Yeah, yeah. My dog, thank you so much as always for the time, boss. Hey, man, it's extra groovy like a big boot at a movie. <laughs> you did. I want everybody, man, to, you know, take care of each other, stay safe in this pandemic. Don't get too caught up in what the media telling you about uh, the politics and shit. Do some reading, do some research. No matter what you discover, if you discover there was a motherfucking alien walking around on Peace Street, ain't nothing you could do about it. So, which they got aliens in ATL, you heard me? Yes, sir. Uh, hi, uh, no pun intended. Uh, but, yeah, pun intended. You did. <laughs> but I want everybody, if, if anything, not be distracted by the, uh, the distractions. Uh, love each other. Take care of your family. Make some new memories. Get some new money. And uh, travel more, bro. You know what I'm saying? Make this life count this time, you dig? Already, fiend. Yeah. Beehive Radio, shout it. Fame hey, for the mind. You know what it is, man. Jet Life, Jet Plan Iron Gang. Shout out Sleepy Bear T, Sleepy Bear Sweat, Sleepy Bear, Sleepy Bear420.com for the illustrated brand in the land. Boom! Oh! We go.